ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد ان اقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال الله تعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد I would like to begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for once again giving us the opportunity to be brought into his house to worship him in the blessed prayer of Jumu'ah. I would like to then praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is the being that is worthy of all praises and no praises are worthy of him. I would like to then send blessings and salutations upon the greatest of his creation prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i would like to remind myself and as an extension to you all that we would not be here if it wasn't for him today insha allah i will actually be taking an excerpt an ayah that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would often recite at every single khutbah Three ayahs that he would also always recite, and these are ayahs that you've probably heard. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. This is one you've probably heard. The one I recited today, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqati. And sometimes the first ayah of Surah Al-Nisa. The common theme across all these three ayahs is the word taqwa. Now, for those people, this is the most basic of deen. That's what Imam, uh, Ibn, Junaid, uh, Imam Ibn Junaid says. The most basic of deen is having taqwa. Now first, I want to, I don't everyone to think, what is taqwa? What do you define as taqwa? Fear, God consciousness. These are all consequences of taqwa. These are not taqwa itself. Taqwa is a shield between the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and us. And it is a rope that pulls us towards the love of Allah. That is the proper definition of taqwa. So for example, when we're driving, and there's no police car around, we're going like, you know, we'll, we'll hit 110, we'll hit 115, I'm a little bit late. But when there's a police car there, we'll make sure we're at 95, or 96, or 97. That's being called police conscious. When you are God conscious, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, You'll be like, Allah is watching, I cannot do this. That is what is having taqwa is called. Having taqwa isn't an action, it is an attitude that drives action. I'll repeat that one more time. Taqwa is not an action. Fear is an action. To have fear of someone is an action. But to be constantly fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an attitude. Because we can fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when at a certain time, at a very specific time. Like let's say Ramadan, 27th night, we're making sure everything's perfect. But to be God conscious every single minute of every single day, that is true taqwa. And what's so interesting is right after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ittaqullah, have taqwa of Allah. When, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Qur'an, it means something. It means turn back. 
the attitude that you have, fix it. And then he says, Haqqatuqah, as it is due to Allah. Now think about it. Can our taqwa ever be due to Allah? Can we ever give Allah the right amount of taqwa? Let's think about it. Can we ever give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the right amount of taqwa? And the answer is no. Never. The Prophet was as close as possible to someone that gave the most taqwa as possible to Allah. And we have to think to ourselves, why did Allah say that if we could not attain it? And the simple answer is this. An actor by the name of Matthew McConley, in his speech he said, My hero is not someone that is alive today, but someone that is going to be alive 10 years from now, and that is the future me. In essence, he was basically saying, I am always going to strive to be someone that I am not, and always going to reach to someone that I'm never going to be. This is what Matthew McConley says a few, a few years ago, and the whole world was clapping. But we have an ideal that we can never reach in the form of the Prophet There is not a single aspect, a single faucet of life that we can ever come close to him. And when Allah says, Taqwa is not just when you, pray, when you pray and you're like, okay, I'm praying in front of Allah, I have to pray properly. No distractions. Taqwa is when you're talking to the grocery clerk, you're talking with kindness. To your neighbors, you're talking with kindness. In every single aspect, taqwa should be with you. And haqqa duqati, how do you get to that? You look at the Prophet. You look at all the Prophets before him. You look at the companions. You look at the righteous scholars. That is what it means when Allah says haqqa duqati. Ubay bin Karab, he describes taqwa as, uh, as very simply the following. He says, if you're in a very, very, very narrow jungle, and there's thorns all in your path, and you have very nice clothes on, how do you walk across that path? You're going to make sure you're covering your clothes, you're making sure you're walking carefully where you're stepping. That is taqwa. Every step is calculated. But nowadays, we say things, we don't think about them. We do things, we don't think about them. And it's something truly interesting that we say words like they're nothing. We don't understand one word we might say to someone. For example, how dumb was that that what you did? And we say that a lot. I said it, I've said it. We don't understand how much it could hurt the other person. And on the day of judgment, may, we might have asked forgiveness for a hundred of years, but if that person comes and says, Oh Allah, He said that to me, that hurt me. Allah is going to call the angels and drag that person to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. That is one of the worst ways to go to hell. Not even because you, you angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, you did indirectly, but you angered a creation of Allah just because we didn't have fear of Allah. Because if we had fear of Allah, we would never ever hurt another human being with our words. In the last part of the khutbah, I will talk about the second part of this ayah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then concludes this ayah with وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Muslimun. Do not die. Verily do not die. You better not die. This is extreme emphasis. Except that you are in a state of submission. Muslim, we call ourselves Muslims like it's nothing. But here Allah is saying, you better not die except that you are in a state of submission. That you are not a Muslim. We are Muslims, are we not? Are we not going to die as a Muslim? 
We've already fulfilled that part, so we're okay, right? The simple answer to that, the Muslims that we call ourselves, that's just a title. The word Muslim entails complete submission to Allah. And we think that miraculously that we are going to know when we die and we're going to be living the best of our lives. We're going to be super, our ihsan is going to be at the max. Our tawakkul is going to be at our max when we are dying. And that is not the truth. And I am going to share a very personal story of mine. There was a friend, a very righteous friend. <coughs> and he got himself involved with very bad company. Very righteous though. Parents raised him very well, Muslim. Always went to Islamic school. Now in high school he decided to go to a public school. And so, as he was entering the latter years of his high school, some people came up to him, his friends, and they're like, let's go for a party. You've never been to a party before, let's go to a party. And so they dragged him and pulled him because he was only one in many. He was one light in many dark. And that is why it is very important for not only your children, but children in general to have righteous company. Ibn al-Qayyim says, it is better to have no company than to have bad company. And this story really emphasizes that. And so this person, they go. And they get him, what we would call nowadays a prostitute, to get with him. And they push him and they get them into a room. Very righteous, very righteous kid. Lived a beautiful life. You'd be happy to have him as your child. And he did what he did with the prostitute and he was in the room. And the prostitute leaves. And the friends come in. And they see him lying. They're like, he's sleeping. What a success. We did something good for him. And they start shaking him. And they start shaking him. Wake up, babe. What, but wake up, buddy. And guess what? He never woke up to see another day. What was he? A righteous human being. We look at him, we'd say, amazing. How could he die in this state? We live our lives like we think we're going to see another day. We are not. When Allah says, do not die except that you're in a state of submission, we have to remember, I can die right now. I can be examined right now. Allah can take my soul right now. Am I ready to go? A scholar asked the people, and the last thing I'd like to end with, he asked the people, he said, when would you like to die? Someone raised their hand 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and I'd like to ask this question to you. When would you like to die? When do you think you want to die? And one person, he raises his hand, he says, when Allah is the most happy with me. And may Allah make us at about, about that time. <laughs> but the scholar says every one of your answers were wrong and the simple reason for that is why did no one say it right now because if we were truly ready we would be able to say right now I'm ready to go oh Allah and that is why when Imam Bukhari was on his <coughs> final days of living he used to pray to Allah, he says, Allah, I am ready to go, you call me whenever. That is why the Prophet was ready to go. That is why Abu Bakr was ready to go. That is why Umar was ready to go. All these people were ready to go and leave this world because it didn't matter to them. Because this world really doesn't mean anything if we're going to be in the company of the Beloved. So Allah said, this world means nothing. So for those that came late, and to summarize everything, حَقَّدْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ means have taqwa of Allah. Revise your attitude. Live as if God is watching you right there. And then, 
Think about every action. It is an attitude that drives action. That's number one. That's tough one. Haqqatu qati, as it is due. Have good role models. Have good companions. Always strive for something better. Don't think that we are okay now. I prayed five prayers today. Tomorrow, you know what? I'll relax. I'll pray four. No. Every single day, we should be trying to do better. Every single day. And the last, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُ مُسْلِمُونَ And to remember, every single day, every single minute, remember, the next minute might not be mine. I might not be alive. So make sure that you are in a state of submission. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the suffering of the Palestinians. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to die in a state of taqwa. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we die and we are raised up on the day of judgment, we are raised up in the companionship of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana la tuakhidna in nasina wa akhtatna rabbana wa la tuhmil alayna isran kama ahmaltahu ala al-ladhina min qablina rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bi wa'afu anna wa'afu anna wa'afir lana warhamna أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم واتقوه يجعل لكم من أملكم مخرجا وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أكبر الله إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الفلاح هيا على الفلاح